Hi, my name is Tara, and I'm the client coach at Atticus Family Law. I want to welcome you today to this five-part series on the five conflict styles. Now, we're all familiar with conflict. We encounter conflict in our everyday lives, in our relationships, in our work environment, and most of us have one or two styles that we feel very comfortable with. When we encounter a conflict, we usually respond in the same kind of way. But did you know there are actually five ways to approach conflict? Five styles of dealing with it. And in this video series, I want to go through each of them individually, unpack them a little bit, and discuss them. And then by the end of the series, what I'm hoping is that you'll have a better grasp on all five styles of conflict and that you're able to consider how you might approach conflict in different ways and make a more mindful choice about how you want to proceed when you are presented with a conflict. So let's get started. And as I said, there are five styles of dealing with conflict. The first one that I want to talk about today is avoiding conflict. So I've put this on a little graph here and you can see the y-axis of the graph says that this is the benefits of the relationship, benefits to the relationship. The x-axis describes the benefits to me or to the individual. So the first part of conflict styles that I want to talk about is avoiding conflict. And that's right here where these two lines come together. You see, there's really no benefit to the relationship and there's no benefit to me or to the individual. When you avoid conflict, this is the sweep it under the rug approach. You acknowledge that it's there, but you don't actually do anything about it. You don't say anything. You're not bringing it up and addressing it with the other person. You're just pretending that everything is fine. Now, in a relationship, this doesn't benefit either one of you. And so over time, avoiding conflict can cause issues to really balloon because you've been pretending that there's no problem while there really is a problem. And then things blow up and you have a really big problem. This is what happens a lot of time in marriages where things just kind of go along day by day. And then all of a sudden there's a big problem. But there are reasons when you might want to avoid conflict. It's not something that you would never use this particular style. You just want to use it mindfully. So for instance, there are times when the benefit of avoiding the conflict is actually greater than the benefit of addressing the conflict. So you might want to think about this at times when maybe you have a conflict with a toddler, for instance, or there's just some kind of very inconsequential issue at stake, and it's just not worth it. You might also choose to avoid a conflict if you need a little bit more time to think and time to process, you recognize that there's an issue, but you're not prepared at that time to address the issue. And you need some more time to think about it. And so you're just going to sweep it under the rug. You're going to pretend that everything's fine, but you're going to do your homework and maybe later you're going to address it in a different way. So there are times when this is going to be appropriate, but you want to, again, use this approach very mindfully because it can create a lot of longer term issues in the relationship. It can cause a lot of resentment for yourself. If you're having a problem and you're not addressing it, you're just avoiding it. But in the meantime, you're suffering as a result. So this is style number one to avoid the conflict. And again, as we see here, not really a benefit to the relationship, not really a benefit to you as an individual, but there are times when you might want to mindfully apply this approach. I hope this helps. Stay tuned, like, and follow for parts two through five. Thanks so much for watching.